video, we're going to connect some things that we've learned previously in the course, and we're going to talk about something called polarity. Now, you probably remember polarity. There's polar molecules and there's nonpolar molecules. But what we learned, Doc, is we're going to talk about polarity as it relates to solvation. Now, the term solvation might be new to you. Solvation is the process of dissolving. So that when you dissolve something in something, it solvates. Kind of sounds like the word salvation, but it's solvation. And Let's talk about and remember what polarity is. There's polar and there's nonpolar. It has to do with the shapes of the molecules, as you recall. The classic molecule of polarity, if you will, is water. And water, if you recall, when you draw its Lewis dot structure, looks like this. And if you recall how we learn about whether it's polar or nonpolar, oxygen is a more electronegative atom. It's, he, he pulls electrons closer to him. So he's going to have a slightly negative charge, and then the hydrogens would then each have a slightly positive charge, and then the center of positive and negative, uh, or positive, pardon me, would be right in the middle between these two atoms, and we would say the positive charge is here. So if you think about it, if we draw the circle here, this has a negative charge, and this has a positive charge. Make sense? So, so that's polar, and then nonpolar are ones that, that don't have a structure. So if you recall, for example, uh, uh, methane, which is CH4, it has a tetrahedral shape. This is nonpolar. So there's polar molecules and then there's nonpolar molecules. But we want to talk about how that relates to things that dissolve in other things. Because if you think about it, when they're when they're, when they're dissolving, they're they're mixing. So what you want to do is just figure out what there's, there's a very interesting thing that we say is that polar molecules dissolve polar molecules and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Or well, the overarching thing we often say is we say that like dissolves like, which means that polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. But here's the weird deal. Polar does not dissolve nonpolar. So if I were to mix water with methane, nothing would happen. They would not mix. They would not dissolve in each other. I need to have a polar thing with a polar thing and a nonpolar thing with a nonpolar thing. Likely you've seen this in action. If you take a, <laughs> you're, and likely you've seen this in action. If I were to take a, a beaker or a graduated cylinder and I would put water down here and then I put oil right here, they don't mix because water is polar and oil is nonpolar. Like oil and vinegar salad dressing, they, they separate, don't they? Because they don't mix. So like dissolves like. But, but why is it? Deeper question, sort of at a molecular level, why, why do these dissolve other things, polar things with other things? And why does nonpolar dissolve nonpolar, and why don't they dissolve in each other? So let's see if we can draw the molecular structure of how polar dissolves polar. So I got polar in polar. So let's draw the water molecules in this color, right? So I've got O, H, H. And if we were to draw the, this side, if you will, is positive and this side is negative. And if I were to put it in another molecule, let's say H, F, now, HF, this side is negative, and this side is positive. And so, since this, there's opposite charges, they have a permanent dipole. Since this is negative, this molecule right here is going to flip around so that the F and the H, if you will, with its negative and positive charge, you see that the negative right here is going to be attracted to the positive. So polar dissolves in polar because of opposite attractions. They, they, they mix and they like connect to each other. So that's polar in polar. Let's draw another interesting point, which is a little bit weird, and it's polar in ionic. Actually, it's the reverse, ionic in polar. How does that work? So if I have a, a crystal of salt, sodium chloride, so sodium, so sodium connected to chloride, connected to sodium, so sodium, chloride, sodium, chloride. You might recall that when you have a, a salt, right, this is table salt, that they're connected 
all in a big crystal lattice. They're one connected to another, connected to another, connected to another. And if you recall, the sodium has a positive charge and the chloride has a minus charge, minus positive. And I, if I drop this into water, right, water again, O, H, H, this side is negative. And what he can do is he can grab the positive and strip that sodium away because he, he has that attraction. And it's actually one water molecule can't pull the sodium away, but what happens is that many water molecules then surround a sodium and uh, with the O facing the sodium, and then many waters also can strip the chloride away. Probably best illustrated now by this image that we're seeing. And you can see how the, the sodium is now surrounding, uh, or the, the waters are surrounding the sodiums in one case, and then surrounding the chlorides in the other. So you can dissolve polar in ionic or polar in polar. Perhaps the more interesting one is, is nonpolar in nonpolar. So why does a nonpolar thing dissolve in nonpolar? That's really pretty cool. Is it really has to do with the fact that they want to spread out. We haven't talked about this yet, but there's a, a fancy term called entropy, that, that the universe wants itself, if you will, to uh, go to more random states. And so if I've got something that's nonpolar, if you think about it for a moment, there is no positive or negative end. And so they simply sort of mix because they want to be spread out more amongst themselves. So again, we could take that CH4 and then we could take, you know, C2H6, both nonpolar molecules, and you mix them all together and they're going to make a solution of each other and they're just all going to be mixed because they, there is no positive. Now I can't write positive or negative. That doesn't exist. And the, so what they do is they thoroughly mix. That's how nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar. And then there's the last case, of course, is what about polar in nonpolar, right? So polar in nonpolar, what's going to happen is that the, the polar things, you already kind of draw on them. If I have a polar solvent like water, right, HOH, he's attracted, you know, via the hydrogen bond to another, you know, water. And so he's attracted because of uh, like charges or opposite charges, pardon me. So, you know, this side is negative, this side is positive. So they're attracted to each other and they, they're more attracted to each other and they don't want to touch say these chemicals over here. So the reason they don't mix is because the polar substances are so connected to each other. All right. Long story short is polar dissolves polar, nonpolar, nonpolar. We like to say like dissolves like. And lastly, there's a very, very cool, interesting thing that we want to think about that you, a very big application, and that is the issue of soap. Now, you, you know this, right? If I wash my hands, it's got some grease on it, and I just put it in water, they don't come very clean. So I add soap, and when I add soap, it works. Why? Because soap is intriguing, is it's got two parts. It's a, it's a big molecule, and it has one part we call hydro, hydrophobic. It's a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. Now these words are easy to understand. Hydro means water. Phobic. You ever heard that you've got some phobias? A phobia is a fear of something, okay? And philic is you love, from the word phileo, all right? Philadelphia comes from the same word. It's considered the, the uh, place of uh, brotherly love. So philly means love, phobic means hate. So water hating, water loving. And so it's a big molecule, and I'm just gonna just draw it kind of like this, if you will. This part, let's say the big head, is the uh, hydrophobic uh, portion, all right? So this is the one that uh, hates water, and this is the hydrophilic situation. And so if I drop this and I've got greasy hands and I wanna wash my greasy hands, what's gonna happen is it's a big molecule is that one portion is going to attach to the grease. So this is the grease in. So because it's nonpolar, so maybe we should make a note here, hydrophobic is nonpolar and this is polar. And so it attaches to the grease, and then this end right here attaches to the water because uh, you were washing your hands in water, and it attracts the hydro. So it's a big molecule, one attaches to the grease, one attaches to the water, and then when you, it, you wash your hands, the grease gets pulled away off of your hands, and that's how it works. So like dissolves like is a very important thing to understand when we look at this.
And lastly, let me just talk about something, uh, do, do so, some reactions here that you may or may not have thought about. So when I dissolve something in water, we can actually symbolize that in an equation. So I can say that NaCl, so salt, if I drop that in water, so solid, and I drop that in water, we'd say that break, breaks into Na positives, Aq, plus chloride minus, because this is a ionic substance, and when it dissolves, this is kind of connected to what we talked about, it completely dissociates. All of them break apart all the time. So it's a complete uh, breaking up of the reaction, because this is, as we learned earlier, is a strong electrolyte, okay? But there are also substances that say are non-electrolytes. So C6H12O6, that's sugar, when I drop that in water, you know what it turns into? It breaks apart into C6H12O6, AQ. Now notice I didn't break it up because a non-electrolyte doesn't break up completely, so I draw a single arrow. And it, it dissolves completely, but it doesn't break up. Does that make sense? So it's a, it's a sugar crystal, like, you know, a little crystal of sugar. You know, it's a, they're cubes. And as they break apart, water surrounds it. This one is uh, polar, so it's got a positive end and a negative end, but it still breaks apart into just a Q. So the water molecules would be surrounding the sugar molecules, like the picture we saw a bit earlier. And then there's a third one, right? We talked about a weak electrolyte. An example we often use is acetic acid or vinegar, HC2H3O2. This will completely dissolve because it's polar, but it's also ionic in that it will break up a little bit. And so what we do is we draw a double arrow and we see H positive, AQ, plus C2H3O2 negative AQ. So it breaks apart partially, but the double arrow is the key here. Is if you look at the double arrow, it means it actually is back, reactions going back and forth all the time, but it's only partially breaking up. So you might think of it this way. <laughs> so what's true about all high school romances? They all break up. And maybe a jaded a bit. That's like a strong electrolyte. It completely breaks up all the time, 100%. Okay, that's not completely true for high school romances, but we're just for sake of argument. A weak acid, or a weak uh, electrolyte, this is an acid, it's called a weak acid, we'll learn about that later, it only partially breaks up, and then, so it's a percentage. Let's say, I, I think I said earlier, this is like a 5%, so it goes back and forth, but you only have a certain portion of them break up, and then in a non-electrolyte, it it does completely dissolve, but it doesn't break up into ions, so there's no dissociation. So uh, here we're learning. Polarity of molecules, they matter, and, and we can figure out why things dissolve by simply understanding polar and polar, polar and ionic, nonpolar and nonpolar, and then polar and nonpolar doesn't work. So the fancy term, like dissolves like, but it has only to do with polarity. It's not like red dissolves red, it's polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar.